It's an investment, but in my opinion, it's a very worthwhile investment, and that is to have a personal branding shoot, and I've done several over the years. So in this video, I'm going to share with you nine tips which you can do to prepare for your personal branding shoot in your home. Before we go on to the tips, why have a personal branding shoot? Well, people buy from people. People want to see the person behind the brand, the person behind a small business. And for you to have photos that you are really happy with, then that's why I suggest you invest in a personal branding shoot. So the first few tips are relating to what you should do before your shoot. And the first one is create an inspiration mood board. And a really good place to start is Pinterest. And you can put in search terms such as personal branding, photo shoot for personal branding, and bring up some shots of, of what you are looking for. So think about what you're going to use the photos for. Do you need lots of portrait photos, for example, for Instagram? Or do you need landscape shots for your website? Do you need a landscape shot with some white space or negative space so you can put some wording? Really think about what you're going to use your photographs for when you're putting together your inspiration board. And you can use that inspiration board for your own point of reference, but what's really useful is to share it with your photographer and they can get an idea of the kind of look you're going for. So got a professional photographer in, I think on day one of doing your course, I was like, right, that's it. I'm booking a photographer because I need some photographs of myself that I'm not embarrassed to show. Um, yeah, so I, so I did that and now I, uh, I feel much happier with all the lovely pictures I'm putting out on Instagram. Number two is prepare a detailed shot list. Now this is really up to you, but it's something I recommend and it's something that I found really helps the shoot to go efficiently and it means you get every single shot that you need for your social media or your website. So think about locations in your house. Are you gonna have some shots in your home office? Are you gonna have some shots in your garden or out walking? What are you really going to have in those shots? Your shot list can detail which outfits you're wearing in which location and the props that you have. And again, just as it's useful for you, it's really valuable for your photographer so they can even use it as a checklist on the actual day of the shoot if necessary. It's thinking about before the shoot, what are stories that I want to be telling on Instagram? And what are the, you know, so if you're gonna be putting a post out on a Monday morning, what what image of you do you want to show? You know, so people might think, oh, I don't want one of me walking the dog or I don't need one of me having a coffee. It's like, actually, yeah, you might not put it on your website, but that is really useful Instagram fodder. You will find, you will find a time that you need to use that. So you need to think about all of those little stories before your shoot. Number three is props. Think about the kinds of props that you want to include in your photographs. So will that be you working at your laptop or your computer, on your tablet, on your phone? Will you be having stationery, for example, if you've got shots in your home office? So what kind of books or notepads will you have nearby? One thing I often do is have a nice mug that fits in with the colours of my brand or a nice glass to have on a desk. Just really think about all the different props which you want to use to tell a story in your photos. Number four is consider your outfits, what you're wearing. Now, depending on your package that you've bought, you might have a choice of one outfit only, or three, or more than that. So check with your photographer first, and then think about looking at your brand colors and which clothes you already have in your wardrobe, which would be perfect for your shoot. Now, this is something I really didn't properly consider when I have my first few personal branding shoots and I just wore clothes that I was comfortable in but when I came to use them then on my website I could see that there was a bit of jarring. So really think about the colours that you have, your brand colours and think about how you can use those, especially the top half of your outfit. And also, if you have your colors done, look at your colors that work well with your face and see which ones of those are also your brand colors and use those. If you find that you don't have enough outfits, then you might want to consider buying some new ones or borrowing from a friend. 
Number five is hair. Now this is really personal, but what I try and do is schedule a hair appointment just before my photo shoot, so whether it needs to be cut or coloured. Um, and you could also consider on the day of the shoot, maybe having a blow dry, or in the States they call it blowout, um, just so you feel a bit more put together, but it's personal choice completely. Number six is makeup. Again, very much personal choice, I, in recent years, have worked with a local makeup artist and fortunately she specialises in makeup for photo shoots, so that's worked really well. Um, if you don't want to stretch your budget to that, then you might want to go to a local department store and have an appointment with one of the makeup artists there or simply do your makeup yourself. Number seven is a manicure. You might want to consider having a manicure if your hands are gonna be on show a lot in the photographs, for example, on a keyboard or holding a book or holding a pen. So really think about whether you'd like to book in to a salon or you can do it yourself. And if you're showing your feet off, you might even want to have a pedicure as well. So all of those tips are relating to prior to your shoot and just spending that time to really think about what you want out of your shoot, the outfits you're going to wear, the kinds of photographs that you want to get will really mean that you maximise your time that you have with your photographer. Tip number eight is the day before preparation. So depending on where you've decided to have your photos taken, which locations, you might want to move some furniture to save time the next day. You might also want to um, have a bit of a hoover or a clean as well. Make sure if you are including your laptop or your phone that they're clean as well. Make sure that all your outfits are clean and ironed and group them together with the jewellery for the outfit and also the shoes. And what I tend to do is bring all the outfits downstairs the night before with everything else and just put them in a room with the curtains pulled and use that as like a, a dressing room downstairs to save me running up and down the stairs each time I need to change an outfit. And another thing to do the day before is something which my makeup artist told me is to think about choosing a different lipstick colour for each outfit and that will make it look like you have had the photos taken on different days. So that's a useful tip. And finally, make sure you have as much sleep as possible. Number nine, the last tip is shoot day preparation. So make sure that you have as much time as possible in the morning before either your makeup artist and or your photographer are turning up. You want to be chilled and not anxious. So whether that means you meditate or you go for a long walk or you do some yoga or you do a hit session, do whatever it is that you need to do to relax yourself because that's how you want to appear on camera. It's also a good idea to either have a printout or your laptop or, or computer with your mood boards and also your shot list on them so that you can work through those and just check through before you finish a shoot that you've covered everything that you want to cover. So I hope you found those tips useful. They're things I wish I'd known when I'd had my very first personal branding shoot over 10 years ago and ever since then they've become much more popular. They're not just headshot shoots now, they're lifestyle shoots. Also the evening after your shoot, maybe book a local restaurant or go out for a drink. You'll be feeling a million dollars with your hair and your makeup done and maybe a manicure and pedicure. So I hope you found those tips useful. I'll put links to the full interviews with Jess from Lolly and the Hair and also Vicky Knights. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you again next Thursday.